Welcome back to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jeremy Lapidus. Today is Tuesday, September 24th. If you are just tuning in, we've just gone over the NFL Power Rankings, all 32 teams. In this segment, we are going to finish off our show talking all about the NCAA, going through our top 25 as well as the top five teams in the group of five. But before we do that, remember, if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Or if you are on YouTube, you can use that Super Chat feature. If you do either of those two things, a message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you do have a burning question about sports, anything at all that you would like to ask, go ahead and throw that in the comments. Throw it in the chat. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. I appreciate everybody so much for sticking around, talking some sports with me here on a beautiful Tuesday, September 24th. But like I was saying, we are going to finish off our show today talking all about the NCAA Top 25. But before we do that, it's the G5, T5, the group of five top five teams. And it is much different than it was last week. A couple of teams drop out of it because of huge losses. Northern Illinois, a loss to Buffalo. Memphis, a loss to Navy. Two teams that were on this list before get a massive loss. It is just a little bit unfortunate for these for these programs that one loss basically takes them out of contention. But as we see at number five, Oregon State, the Pac-12, well represented here. I almost put Navy in there after their win over Memphis, but or- excuse me, Oregon State only has one loss, and it's to a very good Oregon team. If they can run the table, they have a real shot of of making the playoff because they do play Washington State later on. That's going to be a huge game to watch. At number four. My James Madison University Dukes, after a huge win, 70 to 50 over Mac Brown and U- and UNC. Team of the week, player of the week, Alonza Barnett. So there's kind of the tension you want down there in Harrisonburg, Virginia. They just continue to go on their run. New coach, new team, no problem. James Madison is a very good football team. They're here at number four. At number three, University of Las Vegas, UNLV. They were on a bye, or they just continue to win games. They were on a bye this week. There's no reason to move them down. Washington State, though, gets a huge win over San Jose State in overtime. An underrated team in San Jose State there. They're up to number two in the group of five. And number one, Boise State. Tough game against Oregon. I mean, they just continue to play great football, right? Boise State. Number one, until someone can knock them off. There's a huge game, Washington State at Boise State, coming up, I believe, this week. We'll talk about that on Friday, but that is going to be a huge game for playoff implications. So keep an eye on that. That's the group of five, top five. But like I was saying, we're also taking care of our NCAA top 25. So without further ado, start at number 25. At number 25, I have Indiana. And some people might freak out a little bit here. Kurt Signetti and Indiana. I know Indiana has not historically been a very good football team, but 4-0, scoring a lot, a lot of points. They've won 52-14 this week. They just continue to beat teams. Some honorable mentions that Indiana beat out for that number 25 spot include James Madison University, Boston College, UNLV, Nebraska, Kansas State, and Rutgers. A uh, little bit of a little bit of a, of a spoiler for you for some of those teams. Maybe you expected at least one of those to be in the top twenty-five, but Indiana gets that top that gets that number twenty-five spot over those six teams. I really like what Kurt Signetti has done with that program. I'm a big fan of the Indiana Hoosiers this year. At number twenty-four, we have Washington State Wazoo. Like I said couple of big wins. They're climbing that ladder. They have an inside track to the college football playoff. If they beat Boise State and they win out, they control their own destiny. If they win out, they are the most likely team to get that group of five spot. Washington State, there's no reason to believe that they won't. They just got a couple of tests that they need to get over. Pac-12 is coming back. We'll talk about that tomorrow as well. Uh, Lots of interesting stuff coming out of the Pac-12. At 23 is Boise State. Like I said, a big matchup between them and Wazoo. 
Boise State up one spot here from 24 after a couple of ranked team losses. A couple of teams fall out of the top 25. Boise State, another really good group of five team. They just continue to play good football. They're up one spot to 23. At 22, BYU, a huge win over Kansas State. Kansas State looked like it didn't deserve to be on the same field as BYU a lot of the time in this game. BYU, a very, very solid team. They're all the way up into 22 on my in, in the uh, NCAA top 25 for this week. At 21 is Illinois, a huge win in overtime over Nebraska and Dylan Riola. That defense is for real. That offense looks like it's for real as well. If they can continue to get that kind of quarterback play, they're going to be a tough out for a lot of Big Ten opponents with that defense, the way that they're playing. They've beaten a couple of top 25 opponents now. Let's see if they can keep it up. At 22, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State, I mean, they take a big loss to Utah this week. 22 to 19. Alan Bowman's hasn't been super effective. Neither has Ollie Gordon, but that is a really good Utah team. As much as I wanted to punish them a whole bunch, I couldn't take them out yet because that is a very good Utah team they just lost to. They just got out physical, simply. That Utah defense was too much for Oklahoma State to handle, but Oklahoma State is still a very good team. They'll have their chance to come back. They need a couple of things to fall in their favor if they want to get that auto bid, that one of those top four seeds, but they still have a chance at it. At 19, is their school from across the way, Oklahoma. They get a warm welcome into the SEC, a loss to Tennessee, Tennessee also a very, very good team. I think there's a clear top seven, and Tennessee is amongst them. You could put them in just about any order you want, but I think there's a clear top seven with Tennessee in there. That is one of those really good teams that uh, that Oklahoma just ran into a buzzsaw here. I didn't want to punish them too severely. They're down four spots to number 19. At number 18, we have the Iowa State Cyclones. They just continue to win football games. They take down their rival Iowa a couple weeks ago. They do a very good job every single week. Their defense is one of the best in the nation, and that offense is doing enough. It's not the most explosive offense, but they have a lot of returning production, and as long as that production continues to work, they're going to keep climbing in the rankings. Iowa State up to number 18. At 17, we have the LSU Tigers. They stay where they were from last week in my rankings. LSU, I'm a little bit worried about, but still, this is this is an LSU team that I couldn't really put higher because of head-to-head matchups. Right ahead of them is the USC Trojans, who LSU lost to earlier on in the season. I still think USC is better than LSU, so I couldn't really put them any higher. USC, though, falls six spots after a loss to, the, to Michigan in the big house. Uh, not the way I thought that game was going to go. Michigan found their identity run the ball run the ball down your throats they have big boys in the middle and they will run it if you let them usc did not have an answer for them they kept it close but it was not enough in this game and speaking of michigan like i said they found their identity they're here at number 15 over usc up three spots from last week maybe you can say they should go higher i'm still not convinced they did they looked awful in the first couple of weeks this season That was a must win for them. That was a huge win for them. If they can keep running the ball down people's throats, they've got a chance to make some noise this year. But I'm not convinced yet. For now, they sit at 15. At 14, it's Louisville. Louisville is just doing everything right. That offense is scary. They were able to survive against Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech, a team that kind of was their Achilles heel with a running quarterback, but they were able to get a couple of really big, huge defensive stops in that game, end up winning by a good solid margin. Louisville is a dangerous team in the SE in the ACC. I think they're that second best team there. There's a matchup between them and, uh, and Miami coming up soon. That's going to be a huge game in the ACC. At number 13 is Notre Dame. They seemingly have found their offense again. Whatever the Northern Illinois coach told them wasn't working, it completely fixed them. I don't know what he told them, but that offense works now. They've put up a lot of points in back-to-back weeks, and Notre Dame's defense is still going to be very good. They're all the way back into up into number 20, uh, to number 19 after I didn't have them ranked two weeks ago. They're up six spots from number 19 last week. 
At number 12, and maybe you'll look at me with a shock look, the Clemson Tigers. Their offense, after a tough week one against Kirby Smart and the Georgia Bulldogs, has been near unstoppable. 66 points against App State. 60 points against NC State. What are you going to do to stop them? That I know they went up against not great defense, but back-to-back weeks putting up 60 points on your opponent is, is enough to make any team shake in their boots a little bit. That offense can continue to play the way that it is. This Clemson team could make a lot of noise in that ACC as well. Again, there's a couple of really good ACC teams out there. 11 goes to Penn State. Again, they just keep winning the games they need to. They look like a really solid team. Drew Aller is the thing that, again, I'm most surprised by, but he's doing what he needs to do to win games. A scare against Bowling Green a couple weeks ago knocked him a little far out of that top 12, but they're back in it as a couple of teams has fallen. And as long as they keep winning games, it nothing really matters in this Penn State season, as usual, until they take on Ohio State and Michigan. If they can get over their, those two humps, those those two nightmares in the back of their head, Who knows how far they could go this year. At number 10, Missouri. A couple of close calls back-to-back. Overtime win against Vanderbilt. I still believe in this Missouri team, but it's a little scary. They're going to fall a couple of spots. I could have even moved them down a little bit more, to be honest with you. But Missouri is a very, very good football team. Brady Cook, I really like at quarterback. They're still in the top 10, but they're right on the fringe of it. Like I said, I think there's a clear top seven, and outside of that, it's kind of a jumble. At number nine, Utah. They get a huge win without Cam Rising, something that I personally did not think they could do. I didn't think they could win a big game without Cam Rising, but they do it. It's not something that you want to do. Cam Rising is going to be an enigma all season long. If he can play, they can be good. If he doesn't play... Everything's up in the air. That defense is going to be great. They have a very physical football team, but you need Cam Rising. You need that offense as you start to play against really good opponents. I think they got past most of their tough p- opponents in the Big 12. They have basically they basically control their own destiny to the playoffs right now, but you don't want to get overconfident because there's plenty of trap games along the way, and you don't want to get trapped in them. Utah's at number nine. At number eight is the Oregon Ducks. They they were on a bye week, but they seem to have found something against Oregon State, something that I was waiting to see all season long from them. They're up one spot after a couple of teams fall backwards. We'll see if they can keep up the momentum from last week uh, in their matchup this week. At seven, and this is where, like I said, this is where I think there's a clear break. Seven and up, I think you can put it in just about any order. They're the top seven teams in the nation by far. The Tennessee Volunteers are at number seven, a huge win over Oklahoma. Welcome to the SEC moment for Oklahoma. Tennessee is killing it right now. They are a really, really good football team. There's not too many weaknesses there. That defense is solid. The offense was a little bit scary. Uh, it, it took a step back, wasn't as dominant as I, as I thought it would be against Oklahoma, but that was their best opponent of the season so far. So it's fine if they weren't quite ready for that. They still win pretty convincingly. Tennessee is at number seven. And number six is Miami. And I toyed with them going even higher. But, I mean, the rest of these teams here are all really good. Miami and Cam Ward. Cam Ward, I am falling in love with every time I watch him play. The way that he is poised and confident in the pocket, even against heavy pressure, the way that he leads that Miami team that offense looks like it's never going to fail whenever he's out there on the field this is a really good Hurricanes team and that defense don't discount them either they shut down a really good USF team that gave Alabama some fits I really like this Hurricanes team this year but I'm trying not to get too high on them at number five is that Crimson Tide team they have a huge matchup this week against Georgia that is going to be I'm not sure what that's going to do this week or how that one's going to go, but we'll talk about that one later in the week. The Crimson Tide, again, just continue to win football games. They have a huge one this week. This is going to determine a lot as far as national rankings, SEC predictions. It's a huge game against Georgia this week. They're up to number five. At four, another SEC team, the Ole Miss Rebels. That offense, real. That defense is doing its job. Jackson Dart. Could he be a Heisman candidate? I'm not sure to go. I'm not sure if he's if he's going to win the Heisman, but that offense looks really, really good for Ole Miss. They're still here at number four. 
At number three is Ohio State. Will Howard is doing what he needs to do. That defense, it's not as it's not elite, but it's flying around, do, getting the stops it needs to get. Very impressed by this Ohio State Buckeyes team, waiting for them to play a real opponent, though. At number two is Georgia. I talked about their matchup this week against Alabama. That is the big storyline in college football outside of the realignment stuff happening with the Pac-12 and the Mountain West. But Georgia, scary-looking team. Survive a scare against Kentucky last uh, a couple of weeks ago. Still look really good. Dominant defense. That offense needs to get going a little bit, though. And at number one, the Texas Longhorns. Arch Manning gets his first career start against a not very good team. Goes two touchdowns, two interceptions. Solid start for for the young for the young Manning over there. Quinn Ewers will be back. That that Texas Longhorn team. It looks like it has zero weaknesses. There's not a single thing I can point at and be like, that's where you attack this Longhorns team. That's where you shut down this Longhorn team. This Longhorn team is going to be a problem. It's going to be a huge problem in the SEC and around the world of college football for the rest of the season. But let me know what you thought of my top 10, of my top 25. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Again, I think there's a clear line at 7 where we hit that elite kind of, those those 7 elite teams at the top, and then there's everyone else. But let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But thank you, everybody, so much for tuning in to today's episode of Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I have been your host, Jeremy Lapidus. Tune back in tomorrow. We're going to talk about potentially the White Sox breaking the all-time record. They have a game tonight. They have 120 losses. They lose one more. They break the modern era record for losses set by the 1962 New York Mets. That's a big game to watch. Of course, we're going to talk about our NFL rookie reports tomorrow. We're going to do some waiver wire stuff for fantasy and much more. But thank you, everybody, so much to listening for listening to today's episode of Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I have been your host, Jeremy Lapidus. We'll be back here same time, same place tomorrow to talk about all of the biggest news in sports. I'll see you then. You'll have a good one. Bye-bye.